بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Welcome to a new session from Radiology Spotter Cases And as usual we will start Now
Okay, uh, let's discuss these cases. Here in this case, case number one, uh, this case is uh, discussed in uh, the last uh, uh, film reading session. Uh, show that there is a uh, partial agenesis of the corpus callosum. The anterior aspect is present here. The uh, rostrum and the genoa is present, while uh, the posterior aspect of uh, the corpus callosum, including the body and the spleen and the spleen of corpus callosum, is absent. So there is a uh, partial agenesis of the corpus callosum. It is associated with uh, an interhemispheric fissure cyst, as we see here. This is uh, common associated finding with uh, the partial agenesis of the corpus callosum or agenesis of the corpus callosum. Uh, this cyst, as we see, communicating with uh, freely with uh, the ventricle that makes it type 1 uh, interhemispheric fissure cyst. So, this partial agenesis of the corpus callosum associated with a uh, type 1 interhemispheric dorsal cyst. And uh, for further detail, uh, you can uh, uh, revise uh, the last film reading session. Okay, uh, this is uh, MRI spine. Uh, clearly see that there is a tethered cord. The cord is low line. It is uh, uh, terminated uh, roughly at the level of uh, the L4 or L3. So it is a tethered cord. And apparently there is a, a, a fatty lesion here at the uh, uh, inferior end of uh, the uh, uh, coda equina region. Here, this is a fatty lesion that is high in uh, T2, high in uh, T1, and suppressed in stair or fat set images. So it is a fatty lesion. This fatty lesion is uh, intraspinal lipoma. Uh, we should uh, differentiate between intraspinal lipoma. It is important to differentiate between the intraspinal lipoma and two entities, actually. Uh, the uh, lipoma of uh, the phylum terminal, or called fibrolipoma of the phylum terminal, and uh, the uh, lipomyrosil or lipomyromeningocele. Uh, in uh, the lipoma of phylum terminal, it is usually uh, a linear uh, fatty lesion. It is not bulky like this, so it's usually linear fatty lesion uh, along with the phylum terminal. So this is not uh, the uh, phylum terminal lipoma or fibrolipoma because it is not a linear as uh, as I said. It is more bulky, so it is not a phylum terminal lipoma. The other uh, differential diagnosis is the lipomyelocele and lipomyelomeningocele. If this fatty region is continuous uh, with uh, the subcutaneous fat through uh, the defect here, this could be uh, the other differential diagnosis, which is called lipomyelocele or lipomyelomeningocele, according to what's passed uh, through the defect. So uh, this is uh, the intraspinal lipoma. The intraspinal lipoma, this is uh, the uh, classic or a typical example for the intraspinal lipoma. It is co causing, that is uh, the cause for uh, the uh, low-lying cord or tethered cord. So this is a typical case for uh, the intraspinal lipoma associated with low-lying tethered cord. Uh, case number three here, we can see uh, uh, there is a vertebral body fracture including involving the D12 uh, vertebrae. This uh, uh, vertebral body fracture uh, is uh, uh, not associated with uh, uh, malalignment, so it is not a translation uh, fracture. It is well aligned, so it is not a translation fracture. There is no widening of the intraspinous distance, so this is not a distraction fracture. But clearly, there is a disruption of the posterior cortex here, and here we can see that the fresh fracture is involved in the posterior cortex. So this makes the fracture here is a pursed fracture. So this is a, a D12 pursed fracture because it is uh, the fracture is seen involving the posterior cortex as here and if we concentrate it is a comminuted uh, fracture there is a fracture here fracture here fracture here and there is a fracture here so this is a commuted fracture involving the d12 vertebrae with involvement of uh, the posterior cortex that makes the diagnostic possibility of pursed fracture is uh, the uh, diagnosis for this case so this is a D12 pursed fracture. This is a CT virtual gastroscopy. Uh, 
that show uh, abnormal orientation of the stomach we can see this is the esophagus here and this is uh, the gastric uh, uh, fundus here and uh, uh, the uh, stomach is abnormally rotated so this is uh, the pylorus so the fundus is lower than uh, the uh, pylorus so this abnormal rotation is uh, uh, occurring along uh, the mesenteric uh, axis so this is uh, the pattern of a uh, volvulus of the stomach which is called a mesenteroaxial volvulus in the mesenteroaxial volvulus uh, the rotation occur along the mesenteric axis and uh, the fundus of the stomach is usually uh, higher at a higher level than uh, the uh, sorry the pyloric antrum is at a higher level than uh, the uh, uh, gastric fundus so this is uh, the typical example for the mesenteroaxial volvulus in this case we can clearly see that there is an acromioclavicular osteoarthritis and there is a, a, a tendinopathy involving the supraspinatus but it is uh, uh, clearly see that there is an areas that is dark in uh, stair images and dark in T1 weighted images that uh, make us to suspect the presence of calcification so this is a case of a typical case of the calcific tendinitis and this case uh, I will discuss it in uh, the next film reading session uh, inshallah it, it, uh, there is a complementary CT done and reveal the uh, better revealing the calcification and also it better revealed that uh, the calcification is seen within uh, the migrated within uh, the humeral head and I will discuss it in film reading this uh, next film reading inshallah this is uh, the uh, case for in this spotty case this is a uh, calcific supraspinatus calcific tendinitis we must uh, uh, adapt our eyes along uh, uh, about uh, the calcification signal of the calcification within the supraspinatus tendon when we see a persistent dark signal foci within the supraspinatus in T1 and T and T2 and stair persistent dark signal like this we should suspect there is a presence of calcification within the tendon Case number six here we can see there is an evident uh, dilatation of the small bowel, uh, small bowel dilatation showing uh, uh, air flow, multiple air flow levels. So there is an evident uh, small bowel obstruction, and the cause of obstruction is also clearly seen in this page, in this image. We can see that there is a midline ventral abdominal wall hernia, the uh, entering. Uh, 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 bowel and the exiting bowel is which is collapsed so this is uh, the uh, uh, site of uh, the obstruction so this is a typical example for complicated midline ventral abdominal hernia with a uh, uh, abdominal wall hernia with a proximal small bowel obstruction the site of obstruction is or transitional zone is present at the site of the ventral hernia this is uh, the cause for uh, the uh, proximal uh, bowel obstruction Okay, in this case, we can clearly see that there is a hyper, relatively hyper dense lesion seen at the left temporal lobe, and in the uh, gradient weighted images or SWI weighted images, we can see that there is a significant pluming artifact seen at these uh, images that indicate it is a, a hemorrhagic nature. Uh, if we see a hemorrhagic lesion without uh, definite uh, surrounding edema, uh, appreciated edema, this pattern is usually typical for cavernoma. So this is a case of left temporal lobe cavernoma uh, with uh, the typical CT features and uh, the uh, MRI features. If we see, if you see a, a, a hemorrhagic lesion without significant surrounding edema or mass effect you should put the possibility of uh, the cavernoma this uh, cavernoma is hyperdense typical hyperdense density and causing uh, a significant blooming artifact in uh, the uh, susceptibility weighted images so this is uh, the typical pattern of uh, 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 cavernoma and in this case the patient is is presented with an epilepsy because it's uh, site in uh, the temporal loop uh, which is common cause for uh, site for uh, the epileptic focus. This is a 13 years old uh, 
boy that is uh, coming with a cellular and supracellular lesions that showing calcification so in uh, as we know if you see a uh, cellular and supracellular calcifica calcified lesions in uh, a young children you should put the diagnostic possibility of craniopharyngioma craniopharyngioma if you see a uh, partially or uh, calcified uh, predominantly calcified uh, uh, cellular or supracellular region in young uh, uh, children or in young uh, uh, boy you should put the diagnostic possibility of craniopharyngioma and as we see here this is causing some sort of uh, 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 hydrocephalic changes and the patient is inserted and there is an insertion of uh, the uh, shunt tube and there is an also characteristic sign for uh, the craniopharyngioma that the cystic component is usually proteinaceous and it is usually hyperdense relatively hyperdense in non-contrast CT study this is a uh, very important and very a uh, classic sign for uh, the craniopharyngioma its cystic component is usually proteinaceous and it is usually relatively hyperdense in uh, the CT and if you do an MRI uh, images it is usually high attenuation in flare weighted images so uh, uh, this is uh, a very characteristic sign in uh, craniopharyngioma but uh, the rule here if you see an, a calcified lesion in a supracellular cellular lesion in a region uh, in a young uh, patient you should put uh, the craniopharyngioma on top of uh, the differential diagnosis here this is a typical example for the populocystic lesion seen at uh, the brain which is uh, 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 typical for dennett lesion so this is a cortical and subcortical usually it come cortical and subcortical it is seen and uh, the here in the left frontal lesion and we can see clearly see this is the puppy appearance with no definite surrounding mass effect uh, or edema signal this is a characteristic for uh, the dennett lesion dennett lesion can occur uh, uh, commonly occur at uh, the uh, temporal loop and as a common cause for uh, an epilepsy but it can occur at any area of the cerebral hemisphere but usually it is uh, present at the cortical and subcortical uh, uh, location so this is a typical location for the Dennett lesion uh, in this case case number 10 there is a destructive uh, intensely enhancing lesion seen at the region of uh, the jugular uh, fossa this is the jugular vein and we can see this is uh, the uh, enhancing destructive lesion that occur at the jugular fossa uh, this lesion is typical for glomus jugular once you see a destructive lesion at the site of the jugular fossa intensely enhancing you should put the possibility of glomus jugular so this is a typical case for left petrous uh, glomus jugular or left jugular fossa glomus jugular or left side glomus jugular this is a typical example for uh, the uh, which called a uh, 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 holoprosencephaly uh, uh, which is uh, the uh, which uh, the type of holoprosencephaly is a semi looper type of the holoprosencephaly uh, here in this Sagittarius image, we can clearly see that there is a genesis of the corpus callosum, and the genesis of the corpus callosum is the anterior aspect. So uh, while the splenium here and the body, posterior aspect of the body is present. So once you see an a genesis of the anterior aspect of the corpus callosum, and this is not usual. Once you see this pattern, you should put the possibility of holoprosencephaly. It is usually the a genetic or partial agenesis of the corpus callosum involves the posterior aspect. But once the, you see the posterior aspect, while the agenesis is the anterior aspect of the corpus callosum, this is a, a holoprosencephaly case. This pattern of, uh, uh, of, uh, of configuration of the ventricular system is usually occur in uh, the semi looper type in which you can uh, see that there is a partial separation of uh, the occipital horn but the anterior horn is uh, united so this is uh, usually uh, this pattern is classic for the semi looper type and also we can see that the cerebral cortex here is continuous with here with no definite uh, 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 Falk's reply uh, 
and we can see here this is uh, the uh, typical sign for uh, the single or uh, azygous ACA which is commonly seen in uh, the uh, holoprosencephaly. We can see here in this coronal images this is the uh, single uh, ACA or azygous ACA and uh, the interhemispheric fissure is uh, 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 partially absent it is uh, here but it is not complete here so this is uh, the typical example for uh, the semi lobar type of holoprosencephaly. This pattern of configuration of the ventricular system is uh, is a spotty a spotter for uh, the uh, uh, holoprosencephaly semi-looper type you should remember this pattern uh, uh, very well this is uh, a very classic for uh, the semi-looper type of holoprosencephaly and the other associated finding as we mentioned this is a uh, uh, care in uh, any type of the holoprosencephaly Okay, in case number 12, this is an 11 years old uh, a boy that is coming with uh, a hydrocephalic changes and we can see this is a posterior fossa mass lesion. Uh, in this non-contrast CT brain, we can see that the lesion here is uh, relatively well defined and it is relatively hyper dense in non-contrast study. So in the differential diagnosis in the posterior fossa in young adult, we can put mainly two differential diagnoses is medulloblastoma and ependymoma. But if we see that the region here is uh, very well defined, so this is uh, like a pole, so this is uh, a typical for medulloblastoma. And also we can see clearly see this is the high attenuation or hyper density of the lesion in the non-contrast study. And this is uh, one of the classic signs for medulloblastoma. This is a very common question in uh, MCQ about the uh, the hyperdensity mass lesion in the posterior fossa. The hyperdensity is a very very uh, characteristic sign for uh, the medulloblastoma because it is a relatively uh, high cellular neoplasm and it is relatively hyperdense in uh, the non-contrast study. So uh, this is in contrary to uh, the ependymoma which is uh, not uh, such as a hyperdense as uh, the medulloblastoma and it is uh, usually not uh, uh, showing not a well-defined uh, border or margin. It is usually uh, has a, a creepy uh, margin and it has a plastic appearance extend along the foramina as we uh, mentioned many times in uh, a film reading session uh, before. So this is a typical case for Bucir Foster medulloblastoma associated with uh, hydrocephalic changes. This is a, a typical example for a dolicocephalic configuration of the skull secondary to craniosinusus of the sagittal suture. We can see here that there is an absence of the sagittal suture or premature closure of the sagittal suture. The coronal suture and the lower suture is present, but the sagittal suture is prematurely closed. And the skull takes this is longitudinal appearance. This is called dolicocephalic configuration of the skull. Uh, it is important to assess uh, the suture in the 3D images. This is a very important in cases of craniosynostosis. You should do a 3D images to see uh, the, if there is a premature closure of uh, the suture or not. Uh, the, in, in a premature closure, in the 3D images, the suture is absent, completely absent like this. It is not present. So this is an important to diagnose a craniosynostosis to do 3D images in uh, the CT study to assess uh, the uh, uh, suture. Uh, and this is very helpful and make the diagnosis uh, easier. If you uh, see uh, there is an absence here, complete absence of uh, the such the suture, and the skull taking the uh, dolicocephalic configuration. In this case, this is a, a, a there is a serpiginous, a high signal uh, structures or lesions uh, that is seen in the stair. This is a coronal stair image in subcutaneous facial planes of uh, the left leg. So this is a, a serpiginous uh, uh, structures make the diagnosis. Uh, of vascular uh, 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 nature of the lesion is uh, 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 most likely uh, 
uh, if we see here this is uh, the uh, early arterial phase and this is the late venous phase that the lesion is filling in the delayed uh, images so this make the diagnosis of venous malformation is uh, the diagnosis here and if we see here in these uh, uh, stair images the serpiginous structure is a, a high or bright signal in stair images this makes us to think about low flow uh, vascular malformation because uh, if it is a high flow vascular malformation this serpiginous vessels uh, will be signal void in uh, the stair images so this is uh, once you see a bright signal like here we should uh, uh, think about uh, a low flow and in uh, this uh, dynamic study or dynamic phases we, sh we can see this uh, 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 vascular structure fill in at the delayed venous phases so this is a, a, a typical example for the left leg venous malformation the last case here it is a typical example for uh, the space occupying region seen at the left frontal uh, parafal sign region it's showing an uh, significant uh, edema surrounding edema show an irregular ring enhancing lesion in uh, the uh, post contrast study and the diffusion or the ADC show no definite central diffusion restriction so uh, this is uh, the differential diagnosis of such lesion is usually uh, the glioblastoma multiform the metastasis and the abscess the abscess is, can be uh, uh, simply excluded by the presence of uh, uh, free diffusion the abscess, uh, abscess is usually showing diffusion restriction so this is not a, 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 an abscess uh, it leads us uh, the two dif other differential diagnoses, either a metastasis or uh, the glioblastoma multiform. Uh, the, it is a single, not a multiple. So uh, it is uh, makes us uh, to think about glioblastoma multiform rather than uh, metastasis. Here in uh, the uh, MR spectroscopy, we can find an NAA peaks that is uh, likely makes uh, the metastatic nature is less likely and we can see evident choline peak here this is uh, a characteristic with um, a high grade uh, neoplasm so this is uh, a typical example for the uh, left frontal uh, gbm or glioblastoma multiform this is a left uh, uh, this is the typical mr spectroscopy this is the typical mri finding of the glioblastoma multiform uh, this is uh, 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 the G typical example for GBM. Uh, we can also, uh, if we want to further uh, differentiate between the GBM and the metastasis, we can put a voxel of the MR spectroscopy in the surrounding edema, searching for the choline peak. In the glioblastoma form, it is usually uh, the choline peak is present, while in the metastasis, it is usually not present. So I hope. Uh, these were um, uh, uh, an uh, interesting cases and uh, see you soon inshallah